welcome to Content Area Literacy. As you will learn in this course, all content area teachers play a critical role in helping students to think, learn, and communicate with texts. Anytime you see the pause button, you are encouraged to pause the video lesson to ponder, practice, or read further. The learning outcomes for Literacy Matters are shown here. New literacies have transformed the way we read, write, think, communicate, and make meaning. Before we delve into what literacy is and why it matters, let us review quickly the three major components of teaching. They are the environment, your instruction, and your assessment of students. This course will focus on the component of instruction with some assessment. There are 10 general principles of practice associated with quality teaching. Praxis. Effective teachers act on the understanding that education has the power to transform the individual and society. Purpose. Effective teachers operate in the moment, guided by a clear understanding of why they are doing what they are doing. There is always a purpose behind their actions in the classroom. Serendipity. Although effective teachers engage in a variety of instructional practices, they expect the unexpected and are open to learning opportunities that may occur within the context of instruction. Exploration. Effective teachers are continually exploring new practices and making changes in the practices based on their exploration of instructional possibilities in the classroom. Reflection. Effective teachers think about the what, how, and why of instruction during and after each teaching activity. They engage in the process of reflection to solve instructional problems and set goals. Community. Effective teachers share their classroom knowledge and experience within and across multiple professional communities as a means of growing professionally and giving back. Service. Effective teachers serve the learners in their classroom and their parents. Flexibility. Effective teachers plan instruction but are flexible in the implementation of lessons. They adapt to unanticipated events or respond in ways that make learning possible. Caring. Effective teachers care about the learners in their classroom, the disciplinary content that they teach, and the literacy process they use to make the difference in the lives of students. Caring is necessary to build relationships essential to the teaching-learning transaction. Reward. Effective teachers find satisfaction and reward in what they do for their students. They value the spontaneity of classroom life, the immediacy of the classroom, the learning they are part of, and the autonomy of making instructional decisions. Studies consistently show that most middle and high school teachers chose the teaching profession mainly because of the love of a subject, physics, math, art, history, political science, biology, chemistry, literature, a language, health, music, etc. Elementary teachers, on the other hand, most commonly say they elected teaching because they liked being with children. That's a big difference. That doesn't mean middle and high school teachers don't like young people, but rather they have another powerful dynamic. They care deeply about a particular field, a body of knowledge, a special set of tools and procedures, an intellectual tradition, a heritage. Yes, there are a lot of obstacles to students falling in love with math, science, history, language, and the arts. It is right and reasonable that all teachers, regardless of grade level, hope that students have a lifelong engagement with at least one hopefully several fields of knowledge, and they'll pursue it through reading for years to come. Now let's move on to literacy. Take a moment and think about your definition of literacy. Pause this clip to jot down your definition. Literacy means more than the ability to read and write. Content area literacy is defined by Vaca and Vaca as the ability to use reading, writing, talking, listening, and viewing to learn subject matter in a given discipline. 
This reading, writing, talking, listening, and viewing involves the use of textbooks, many of which are written at a reading level above the intended audience. Teaching with text requires the use of reading strategies instead of a sign and tell, which most of us experienced. To use textbooks strategically, you must first be aware of the bond that links reading and learning across the curriculum. To understand the bond between reading and learning, it is important to understand some basic definitions. Cultural literacy refers to what an educated person should know about the arts, literature, and other determinants of culture. Functional literacy is the reading and writing that a person needs to survive in society. Computer literacy refers to the level of experience and familiarity someone has with computers and computer applications. Digital literacy is defined as the ability to use digital technology, communication tools, or networks to locate, evaluate, use, and create information. Information literacy refers to the ability to identify, locate, and access appropriate sources of information. Media literacy is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and produce communication and information in a variety of media modes, genres, and forms. Health literacy refers to someone's ability to obtain, process, and understand the basic health information and services needed to make appropriate health decisions. Content literacy is the ability to use reading, writing, talking, listening, and viewing to learn subject matter in a given discipline. Content literacy is the inability to read or write a language. A literacy is the lack of reading habit among those who have the ability to read and write but choose not to. Prior knowledge reflects the experiences, conceptual understandings, attitudes, values, skills, and strategies a student brings to a text learning situation. Schema is the knowledge network that guides human behavior. Reader response refers to the way a person reacts to hearing or reading a piece of text. Scaffolding refers to the support and guidance provided by an adult or more capable peer that helps a student function on a higher level. School literacy encompasses cognitive processes such as reading and social, cultural, and political processes. Community literacy includes out of school cultures and literacy. The home language of an ELL student is an example. Personal literacy involves students' critical awareness of themselves. This type of literacy influences students' interpretations of the text. The demands placed on a reader changes from subject matter to subject matter. Reading a social studies textbook is different from reading a biology textbook, which is different from an algebra textbook. Yet students are expected to go from one to another in a matter of minutes. It is very demanding on the student to switch from content text to content area text. That is why the anticipatory set and pre-reading activities are so important. There are several factors that influence content area literacy in a given subject area. They are the learner's prior knowledge of, attitude toward, and interest in the subject. Learner's purpose for engaging in reading, writing, and discussion vocabulary and conceptual difficulty of the text material, assumptions that the text writers make about their audience of readers, text structure that writers use to organize ideas and information, and teachers' belief about the attitude toward the use of text in learning situations. When skillful readers have difficulty comprehending what they are reading, they usually become strategic in the way they approach challenging and difficult text. The characteristic of good readers are that they are active, purposeful, evaluative, thoughtful, strategic, persistent, and productive readers. The difference between proficient readers and those who struggle all the time is this. 
when proficient readers struggle with text, they know what to do to get out of trouble. What are the strategies of good readers? Good readers have clear goals in mind for their reading and evaluate whether the text and their reading of it is meeting their goals. They look over the text before they read, noting such things as the structure of the text and text selections that might be most relevant to their reading goals. They make predictions about what is to come. Good readers read selectively, continually making decisions about their reading, such as what to read carefully, what to read quickly, what not to read, what to reread, and so on. They construct, revise, and question the meanings they are making as they read. They try to determine the meanings of unfamiliar words and concepts in the text. Good readers draw from, compare, and integrate their prior knowledge with material in the text. Good readers think about the authors of the text, their styles, belief, intentions, historical menu, and so on. Good readers monitor their understanding of the text, making adjustment in their reading as necessary. They evaluate the text quality and value and react to the text in a range of ways, both intellectually and emotionally. They read different kinds of text differently. They attend closely to the setting and characters when reading narrative text. Good readers frequently construct and revise summaries of what they have read when reading expository text. Finally, good readers think about text before, during, and after reading. There are six myths of good readers. One, that they can read a thousand words a minute or more with improved comprehension. Two, they don't sub-vocalize. Three, they read only the key words. Four, they recognize words as wholes. Five, they read groups of words as a unit of thought. Six, they never look back. These myths are all incorrect. Scaffolding gives students the strategies and tools necessary to help them become independent readers of difficult material. Another definition of scaffolding is that scaffolding is a style in which teachers gauge the amount of assistance they offer to match the learner's needs. As the U.S. moved into the 21st century, teacher education programs began to include courses in literacy for all teachers, no matter their degree or content areas, so they would know how to use reading and writing to facilitate growth and mastery of knowledge in all disciplines. Therefore, content area literacy has evolved to help content teachers increase their capacity to help students who struggle with literacy. That is why content area teachers of any grade have the responsibility to teach literacy skills needed to read and write like a scientist, historian, mathematician, or literary critic. Using various reading strategies or skills in the content area benefits both the teachers and the students. While there has been literacy guidelines for elementary teachers for many years, in 1999 the International Literacy Association developed seven principles for literacy growth in middle and high school students. These principles are good for any grade level in the content areas. The seven principles are adolescents, or dare I say students, deserve access to a wide variety of reading materials that they can and want to read. Instruction that builds both the skill and desire to read increasingly complex materials. Assessment that shows them their strengths as well as their needs and that guides their teachers to design instruction that will best help them grow as readers. Expert teachers who model and provide explicit instruction in reading comprehension and study strategies across the curriculum. Reading specialists to assist individual students having difficulty learning how to read. Teachers who understand the complexities of individual readers, respect their differences, and respond to the characteristics, and homes, communities, and a nation that will support their efforts to achieve advanced levels of literacy and provide the support necessary for them to succeed. There are 15 elements of effective literacy programs. Direct explicit comprehension instruction, which is instruction in the strategies and processes that proficient readers use to understand what they read including summarizing, keeping track of one's own understanding, 
and a host of other practices. Effective instructional principles embedded in content, including language arts teachers using content area texts and content area teachers providing instruction and practice in reading and writing skills specific to their subject area. Motivation and self-directed learning, which includes building motivation to read and learn and providing students with the instruction and supports needed for independent learning tasks they will face after graduation. Text-based collaborative learning, which involves students interacting with one another around a variety of texts. Strategic tutoring, which provides students with intense individualized reading, writing, and content instruction as needed. Diverse texts, which are texts at a variety of difficulty levels and on a variety of topics. Intensive writing, including instruction connected to the kinds of writing tasks students will have to perform well in school and beyond. A technology component, which includes technology as a tool for and a topic of literacy instruction. Ongoing formative assessment of students, which is informal, often daily assessment of how students are performing under current instructional practices. Extended time for literacy, which includes approximately two to four hours of literacy instruction and practice that takes place in language arts and content area classes. Professional development that is both long-term and ongoing. Ongoing summative assessment of students and programs, which is more formal and provides data that are reported for accountability and research purposes. Teacher teams, which are interdisciplinary teams that meet regularly to discuss students and align instruction. Leadership, which can come from principals and teachers who have a solid understanding of how to teach reading and writing to the full array of students present in schools. A comprehensive and coordinated literacy program which is interdisciplinary and interdepartmental and may even coordinate with out-of-school organizations and the local community.